Thank you. That was nice. Hey, it says we are live. Welcome, everybody, to Old Gray Bricks, uh, the Thursday night live. Uh, we have a full house here, and uh, we are so glad for that. I know some of our guests will be uh, fading out, so some of our guests who have invites want to come in later. Uh, just get your finger on the mouse and get ready to click when somebody disappears. We are glad you're here. Uh, we have a lot of folks already in the chat. Let's go through that. Uh, Jeff McElwee is in the chat. Uh, Andrew Sada is there. Uh, Builder Q. Uh, Brick NZOR. I hope I didn't. I, I got that up. Van Winden or VW Bricks is there. I don't know if that's Jeff Van Winden or not. I don't think it is. Uh, let's see. Builder Q is there. Richard Seamus is in the chat on the side over there. Uh, Adrian Brick Frenzy is here. Uh, so great, great to have y'all here. Great to have y'all joining us. Great to have a full panel here today. Uh, so we're going to do a quick spin around the room and uh, see how uh, you guys are. Oh, that is Jeff. Is, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we, we have double Jeff's in the chat over there. Um, Smelt the maple. <laughs> only one Canadian in the room. So uh, that's, 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 that may be our limit today. People. Um, so let's go. Maddie, what's going on? How are you today? I'm doing great. I convinced my dad yesterday to take me to the Lego store. And you know how I'm good at sweet talking, right? Yeah. <laughs> did you, did, wow. Did you schmooze some guy? I smoothed a lady this time. And oh, yeah. I said I was really bummed that there wasn't the Amelia Earhart set because I heard that there was extras. And she was like, do you like Harry Potter? And I was like, do I ever? And she went to the back and she pulled out one of these for me. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Wait, wait, for free? For free, yeah. He said, oh, he said we have a box of these in the back. Don't tell anyone. And, of course, I was holding up the line, <laughs> jumping up and down, screaming. And when I walked away, I heard the next kid be like, can I have one of those Harry Potter books, too? And I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're telling the whole internet. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, we are not quite tens of people watching, so you're okay right now. <laughs> <laughs> there are literally yeah. dozens of us. Yes, yes. Um, literally. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, good deal. It's a good deal. Good. How is your TikTok channel going? Are you. Oh, actually, my Instagram um, blew up yesterday because I finished my Harry Potter mod and I got the most likes I've ever received on a Lego <laughs> Instagram post. So. <laughs> nice. Yes, uh, we, we will be talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we will be talking about things that uh, some spouses may not want other spouses and significant others to know about today. My wife is safely 45 minutes away uh, serving barbecue right now. And uh, so that's all good. Um, and you know she this is recorded, right? Yeah, she wouldn't watch it if I gave her money. So it's okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, uh, anyway, all right, let's look at our, let's talk to our lone Canadian here. What's going on in your world, buddy? Um, not too much. Just uh, slugging through this week, trying to keep my eyes open after this, after the time change, which you griped about on Monday. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, not, um, not too much. I do, I have actually been contemplating a new sort of creative endeavor um, that Ooh. does involve Lego. Oh. And it does, it's not focused on it. And you probably will be able to tell that it is Lego, I hope. Uh, but it's also building in a style which I've really never built in before, which is micro scale. So, uh, so yeah, I need to yeah. be doing a little bit of research. So if anyone has any, um, any uh, recommendations for sort of space terrain oriented uh, micro builds, um, oh, yeah. please feel free to throw in the chat. Um, My uh, cat's... It's not, she, she doesn't, I don't know if she does, I know she does space stuff, but she doesn't do space micro scale, but she does a lot of micro scale. Kaz, ma, uh, mock it. Yeah, all right. Block UK. She does a lot of micro builds, and she's great at it. I mean, she's like, her micro builds are in the Lego house. Yeah. And where is she? What's what's her name? Um, Kaz, mock it. Um, see oh, yeah. Yeah, UK on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. She right. is the queen of micro scale. So she, she might do some space. I know she likes space in general, but her micro scale is usually just city stuff, but it's just, it's gorgeous. What's awesome. her name again? Thank you. Blockhead UK, Kaz Market. 
Block it UK. Is that what it was? Block it. Block it. Head UK. Yeah. Annunciation. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's good. All right, we look forward to seeing that. And uh, I was thinking about it the other day. I'd love to see some Tech West come back because uh, if you back in the day, uh, yeah. Gil rocked us all with uh, his own theme, which was Tech West, and that means you know cowboy meets space kind of stuff. But its own world. It was great, and uh, uh, I'd love to see some of that coming back. So uh, we do have someone with us who hasn't been with us in a while, uh, Ryan. Our, our friend and director of all things Legoland New York. How are you today? Oh, man. I wish I had the title director. That'd be nice money. Uh, <laughs> things are very busy, which is why I haven't been on so much lately. Um, I imagine. Uh, just putting my PR hat on. Uh, not much in the way of news, but I would expect something soon for those of you waiting to find out when the park is going to open. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh. New York, New York State uh, announced their restrictions and guidelines for indoor and outdoor um, theme parks, and uh, as early as April 9th, outdoor th attractions can open at 33% capacity. So that's not me announcing that New York is opening April 9th, but that's the soonest we could open our doors. Uh, but we're still very busy trying to put the finishing touches on. So it'll be it'll be super awesome once it's done. Hey, hey, I've got a question. Maybe you can't answer it because Boone is in the chat. The uh, and uh, the models from the first season of Lego Masters were reported to be landing with you guys. Is that still going to be the case? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my 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 mouth brain filter is running real quick. I got that. Um, I don't, think I don't want you to break confidence or maybe no, 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 no. So they were at Legoland California, uh, first, second, and third place. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the winning uh, Tyler and Amy, their model is currently en route from California to New York for me to reassemble and put on display in our big shop. Cool. All right. And then, then the others seem to be will follow. Is that correct? I, I don't know. Okay. As far as I know, the only commitment was for the winning entry for New York, but Legoland California took all three, so they may keep second and third, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Okay, that is good to know. Good knowledge to know. And uh, I love watching you get that little bead of sweat going, oh, crap, what can I say? So, <laughs> And also, too, can, can, I say that, can I say that with the hair growing out, the beard, the glasses, the collar shirt, Rye is like the dad I, the TV dad I always want, wanted, man. Yeah, I got, I got the. <laughs> That's perfect. All I got right. every every element of that going for me right now. The nice, the wrong with a dad, the nice, the nice thinning hair. Can we yeah, see thanks. If that appreciate still that. Fits? No, 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 no shirts, shirts yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Where's my wallet? I Bring out the dollars. <laughs> Look, I'll pull this out over right up. now. <laughs> Ooh, stimulus money. Wait, 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 wait. Did you bring props for this, Dana? Was that prop for the for the actual topic? <laughs> uh, no, I just happened to have my wallet here, and I knew it had some cash in it, which is a very, very, very rare moment. So. Okay. Oh, wait. What was that? What was that? What was that? Sorry, I, I hate talking about work all the time. So I, I actually had something I was working on the other day. Ooh. Was, oh, that's oh, awesome. awesome. Kind of Roman inspired angry alien dude that I'm. I'm so, he has no legs to speak of at the moment, but uh, something I was working on because I was sorting some mixels the other day and I just got playing again with pieces that I didn't have a whole lot of um, until we started sorting mm. it. But yeah, he's a. He's, I don't know. You know he's he's you know angry I, though. He's very angry. When I kind of see that, he looks like the lead singer of who would have sung that Wields War, War Warriors theme, theme song. <laughs> With that final wheel warriors at like the end. <laughs> so, look at the boat. It's perfect for that. That's it, awesome. It, it's I was getting a metal vibe. Yeah. yeah. And for a theme that really no none of us really ever cared about, so many awesome pieces that we got from that. There you go. Yeah. All right. Let's go from uh from New York down to Florida, which is New York South. So <laughs> How you doing, Brick Smith? How you doing? I'm all right, man. How about yourself? Good. What's going on in your world, bud? Uh, we finished the thing on the show you guys don't watch. Um, I watched some. <laughs> yeah, you watch. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I watched the replay this afternoon when I was building. 
I had full attention. You about Maddie's yeah. score and um, something about somebody else's new film. I can't remember. My mind. Your show come on. Uh, eight eight o'clock on Wednesday nights. We we are actually we're actually going to start building this next week. Ooh. And we're all going to build different. We're all we're all going to build the different builds. So we'll see. Building the RV? Huh? Are you building the RV? Or something? Yeah, you are. Yeah, you know, you I'm going to build the RV. <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, I started walking. Yay! Yeah. Try to get ahead of your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> when Stephen is out. Burn. Uh, Kevin Hinkle, uh, who from from uh, the art community, uh, <laughs> he, he started doing a thing, and and uh, uh, we're walking to Machu Picchu, and uh, I've never walked this much in my life, and I'm I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> now is, is he live streaming when he walks is that what he's doing uh, he said he's doing it on instagram i am i'm live streaming the first five three to five minutes every morning just talking about how my feet hurt and what florida <laughs> pollen looks like uh, i could call my dad and hear about all of that so right? you know. <laughs> it's like johnny l rude's night beat uh also i don't know and, and i ain't done Okay, well, okay, I'm okay. right up here. Yeah, wait, yeah. I don't know if yeah. anybody has seen this yet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the Lego cut. Yeah, so whatever. Very good. Cool. I'm done. No gang signs. <laughs> 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 Just leave me up there. That's right. I can leave you up there. That'll be yeah, fun. okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, Brom is here. Uh, it's good to have you here, buddy. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, did I see Brett Hooper? I thought I saw his name over there. Maybe. Ooh. All right, let's go to uh, Miss Pink Wheels. How are you today? I know, I think you've got an amazing mock to show us today. I hope you do. Actually, is Boone still in the chat? Is Boone still here? Uh, I hope so. He posted just a second ago. Boone, I built something for your challenge, and I'm almost finished. Right, Which is going to make me want to quit. Awesome. No. <laughs> it, it, it entices you to build more. You got it? Oh. oh, well, it looks like I've seen this. Not the first time I've ever said that either. Hey, I want to see the green one. Let's see the green one. looks over here. Yeah. I just, it falls down, so I took it off. Oops. Hey, uh, look at cool. Sabine's, what's Sabine's uh, concrete in there? It's it's there. It just, it's just, it just stays here and it just falls over because. I'm not even and holding it. There you go. <laughs> All right. We'll take some fun. Magic. Here's your winner. No. There's your winner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the winner. It's My Ron God. from the EU who was, who was brought back by Dave Filoni in Rebels. And this is the office that he has in Rebels. And he has Tara's Calicori. He has the Kyber Crystal. And he has the office chair. I love it. He has the beans graffiti. Very that is cool. amazing. I hate you. I quit. So, <laughs> hey, I, it came to me. I really want to do Thrawn's office, and there really wasn't anyone out there who had made Thrawn's office. So I'm like, I got to make something that wasn't done. Before. It's stinking awesome. It is super you stinking should awesome. Put, you should put Dwight and, and Jim outside of it. Am I here? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Pam and Jim from uh, the office. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Yeah, that's all we've been doing. And Natalie, what did she buy? Goodness, what did she buy? I don't remember what she bought. She bought something because I have to keep robbing her because she's not feeling well. So. Oh, oh, oh. That oh. joke right there. There it that is. That's is terrible. That's pun. <laughs> awful. That's perfect. I, uh, you know, Boone, I'm sending you invites, but I may rescind it for the dad joke. So, anyway. <laughs> Only because he's jealous that you said it first. Exactly. Like, that is totally it. So, no, that's amazing. And uh, I know little one is not feeling super hot tonight. So, no, um, so it's just me. So yeah. I don't, I can't stay too long because I have to bribe her to bed here shortly. Well, we're hoping that she, uh, uh, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm hoping that she gets better uh, soon. So, all right, good to have you here, and that is an amazing mock. I can't wait till it's, I mean, it's super, super awesome. So, 
Great, great, great. All right, let's see. Let's go to Matt. Matt, what's going on in your world, buddy? So it's spring break here, so we are uh, not doing anything except staying home. <laughs> and uh, we've done a lot of sorting, so I'm actually pretty caught up on sorting. I built the TIE Fighter helmet from the Lego store that I bought with a group of purchase early in the month. And uh, my parents were here last uh, Thursday, so that's why I wasn't on the show. And their comment was, um, wow, that cathedral is really big. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my mom was a fan of the Lego flower bouquet, which was sitting underneath my TV. So she's... Um, She's not a Lego person, but she definitely liked that particular set. So demonstrating its crossover appeal to people who are not really Lego people. So, Right. I gave that to Mel and Jake and I built it for her for Mother's Day. And she loved it. And she sat it in, you know, by I mean, in the living room. It's the only Lego allowed in the living room to be displayed. But it looks great sitting there. And uh, one more thing. I don't, I don't, I don't, my, my brain doesn't go, oh, my Lego, there's Lego sitting over there. It, you know, it looks like flowers. I mean, it's, it's a, it's an impressive thing. So. Yeah. My, my coworker had a pic, came by my house and she saw that on my, on my um, kitchen island and she's like, wait, is that Lego? <laughs> Can you put me back on the main screen for just a second? Yeah. 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 I got you. There you go. So uh, Dana, I don't know if he mentioned it on third last Thursday, but um Three of us here in Atlanta went ahead and for a Kickstarter project for a a uh, customized uh, series of minifigs, and they're called Dino Dudes. And so they're so wearing cool. like little dinosaur costumes. So there's like a T-Rex and a Triceratops and a Brachiosaurus. Well, <clears throat> I got the extra extra, and I bought the Dino Dunes, the uh, museum edition, where they're all in their skeleton costumes. Wow, that's awesome! So these are the third party. That's kind of creepy and cute at the same time. Yeah, it's a third that's party. Awesome. They're printed in China, but the quality feels pretty decent. Uh, the ABS plastic doesn't feel as cheap as some other third party uh, printing that I've come across. But uh, yeah, I I love the little pterodactyl like on the back. You know, you Those are cool. Skeleton. Do they so, glow in the dark? That's what I, I was thinking too. <laughs> I don't think so. I think Dana said she, he checked and they don't glow in the dark. It looks like oh. they might, but they do not glow in the dark. So I'm a big fan of the dino dudes. It would be cool yeah. actually if you put those on like black base and background and then just hit it with a little bit of light. I'm sure the, the camera would just pick up the bones. It looked really, really neat. I think the mouths do glow in the dark though. Oh, yeah? Oh. I think. Well, I'll have to get some technical lighting advice from you. <laughs> Just turn the light off, Matt. <laughs> yes. What, or, if I, or, what if I dampen the glare from my forehead? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, Adrian, Adrian's saying it's Guy Hember's uh, Crazy Bricks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, he announced something about some new leg molds that he was making, I believe, some with, like, action poses. So that's super cool, and I like that. I know... Rick Smith, you're gonna question my Lego purity here, but I like those kind of things. Those are pretty fun. So the uh, uh, they the, look uh, cool, the and the I can't wait for Lego to put them out. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Gil? Just saying the mouse guard ones that I picked up from him are great. They're really, really good. <laughs> yeah, he's an awesome guy. He does some awesome work and everything. Um, so uh, support that. Oh, John Rudy is here. Good to have you here. Uh, so. Uh, by the way, do you when you tested the glow in the dark, did you do like the five year old move where you put it in your hand and you cup it and you look with one eye, you know, closed? <laughs> that whole thing. It glows, I swear. Anyway. But Dane, Dane is the one that tried it. Who did? Did you try the glow in the dark? I don't have the skeleton ones. Oh, okay. Then I then I need to test it. I thought I read that they don't glow in the dark, but I'll test it. I, I just thought it was off. interesting but, that you were name dropping and I was go I'm like, all right, roll with it. Well, you got you got the non-skeleton dino dudes. You and Shane right. both got them, but I'm the only one who got the skeleton ones, I guess. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Turn the lights off. We'll wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cover your eyes. Click, click, click. Oh, dude. I got to turn up one more. <laughs> going to do it. <laughs> no. Oh, there you go, folks. Live entertainment. Yeah. Everybody here, a Millennium Falcon hit the ground. 
We do have some glowing yeah, parts. Everything is awesome. Ah! They definitely do not glow in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> We expected the screen te the but test to be do. on screen, but that's these okay. Glow in the dark, but not the yeah, fail. <laughs> so much fail. Oh, All right, glow that's fail. Awesome. Glow fail. You know glow what I need fail. to get is uh, some glow in the dark paint and just hand paint them. That would be cool. That would and be cool. somebody who has painted Lego minifigs. Oh. You need really, really, really small brushes. Well, I'll send them to Gil's house. Sure. He's wait, wait, wait. Was that a was that a really small brush joke or was that a? I mean, I don't no, know. It was truly a really small brush. Like <laughs> no, he, I he found was. for Natalie's mini doll customs that she wanted to make. I had to find like the smallest filament available, and it's still not small. Well, people, some people use toothpick tips. Mm -hmm. No, but Gil yeah. does his own like action figure painting scenes, and it's amazing. I, it was actually not it. That was. It was not a negative jive. I meant that as a compliment. So. <laughs> you, you can say that it wasn't a negative jive, but we all know better. We but all know the target. <laughs> we yeah. all. <laughs> all right, let's spin around to Magnus. Magnus, what's going on, buddy? Up your mute. Beside the mute. I'm sorry. Here we go. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I am uh, Lego wise. I am. Continuing to work on the big castle, which looks like this right now. Oh, it's my macaron! Yes! Yeah. Um, one of the things I did most recently is I uh, I made it look. Uh, I did a few things that made it basically look better from the inside, which you'll only notice when I uh, uh, when I show it off properly in in at, at a show or something. Right. But um, like so, this whole thing here in the front comes off. Nice. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up that cobra on the on the wall there, up to the camera. We want to see it. Oh, so oh, good! Wow. Oh, that's great. That's nice. so, and then that's a door. Of course, it opens. Of course, it does. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Oh, that's so good. And then inside here, um, I let's see if I can show you with a. Uh, Lego light. Oh well. Anyway, uh, I'm beginning to think about how to make uh, the interior light up using um, these uh, light bricks here. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to come up with a switch system where, you know, I could I could sort of press a button on the outside wall, and that would kind of turn them on. That's I, awesome. I think those missile batteries are new too. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these are some of the the, the, mist, the mist batteries are definitely. Oh, um, that 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 radar uh, that that AA radar that's really cool. Yeah, too. yeah, it is. That's yeah, awesome. right. And then let's see these these guns turn around and stuff. And I love how you got those those things. Just basically look like they're the molded plastic from the toy. They're just the yeah, one color. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's spot on. I love it. Yeah. Right, and then oh, we have some so cobras fun. up here and all that sort of stuff. Hey, does that cobra on the top have like a tail too that goes up behind it? Oh, yeah, yeah. it does. Okay, uh, we now hate you. I hate oh, you. Oh, that's so oh, come cool. On. That's, that's very awesome. cool. That's yeah, so cool. Yeah, cobra. Um, yeah, that is cool. That's really cool. And actually, the thing I've been doing uh, most recently that's been most work is there's a very distinctive dungeon in this castle. That's referred to as an oubliette, which kind of looks like a, a sort of... Like a sewer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of like when you're stuck inside, it's kind of like you're inside like a dome. Yeah. And uh, so I think I showed an earlier version of this uh, in an earlier show. But this That's is cool. this is meant to look like that from the inside. So the idea is I pull this thing off, this bit off, right? So this is like a... A quarter of it that comes off, and then in this is what it looked like inside. And I'll do it all in the same color and replace that thing there with like an actual kind of pedestal y thing. And then I'll you've, you've got to po pose it too to have like uh Scar Scarlet slamming that lid down on like uh Storm Shadow's face, yeah. And so the lid, the, the lid is uh yeah. it's this bit here, see, this is the yeah. lid. Wow. That's so awesome. a lot top, of it looks like that. See, that's cool. That's super and cool. 
domes in Lego are like the worst thing to make ever, and that looks really good. It does. Uh, thank you. I'm I'm real happy with it so far. I'm uh, my my girlfriend uh, made the observation that uh, when I looked in the comics, I thought it was like a half circle, like a dome, and she made the observation that it's actually more like the top half of an egg, like kind of it's not entirely round. It's more almost oval, and I think she's right, but. Um, I decided not to do that because that makes this taller, which means I can build a taller mountain to hide it inside. Mm. And uh, that makes it all more expensive to, to, to build because this is going to sit underneath the castle here. Uh, this is going to sit underneath the castle like that. Oh, wow. Right. And so the castle is going to need to be up on a on a rock that is only going to have to be about 12 bricks tall, which is the equivalent of two burps in height. So imagine the castle on like a 12 brick high kind of burpy mountain thing. And this will be kind of underneath. That's, so that's, that's amazing, man. So cool. Uh, thank you. And then I also went in the process of buying these things. I also just got a bunch of extras and now I'm, Messing around with these things and having fun. Maybe I'll make myself a helmet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. So that's what I'm <laughs> I am so glad that I looked back for that. I, I'm glad I'm not. I'm glad I'm not showing off a mock after that. Mark Salmon, what have you built this week? <laughs> um, I I got the dragon horse jet, which is really cool and fun. Pew pew pew. <laughs> and it's kind of difficult for the pilot to see out because they're kind of lying all the way down. That <laughs> oh, look at that pilot. Look at that. Wrong He's glorious. <laughs> but it is actually a really good set. Um, it's got these, all of the. This is a super cool detail. And the way it's built and everything, it looks awesome. The, um, the snot work on the front of it is really cool. They did a whole thing with the pieces are stuck together with a Technic axle to make that whole chunk. And then that is clips that clip onto there. And then these little slope things here hold it on, which is just super cool. I mean, that's yeah. just a really great bit of snot work that I kind of wouldn't expect from a Sort of mid-size spaceshipy kind of thing. Like it's really nicely built, so it's it's very cool. Yep. Um, and also picked up the. I got a couple of videos because I I wanted the shark dude. I just I like the shark guy. He's yeah. fun. Yeah, he is. Um, I ended up with the samurai dude. I wasn't looking for him, but that's what I got in the box. Although I do love this headbanger tile right here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and the, of course, the seagull's great where he's pooped on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and part of the reason why I like this. Well, is, I heard the kid laugh in the back. I heard it when you made the poop noise. That was, <laughs> see? Of course, of course. <laughs> yes, look, look, it's right there. The seagull poop. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Poop alert. That's right. That's, that's the nine-year-old uh, humor contingent. So, um, and small Paul, why don't you bring your acquisition? So small Paul got the Ninjago Jungle Dragon set. Ooh. Yay! Ooh. All the teal, all the teal. Yeah, it's got loads of teal. It's a really cool dragon. Lots of great parts. Awesome dragon chompy action. What do you like about it, small Paul? Tail, the, tail. the mouth, and everything else. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that narrows it down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can yeah it really is. That's cool. cool. It's got yeah. really neat. Swinging action. Yeah. It's very cool. Did you say swinging action? Yes. Swing. No. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, we've got some new folks. Uh, Butt Chop is here in. Welcome, Butt Chop. Good to have you here. Mr. Blue is here uh, in the chat. So, uh, got a lot of friends with us. <laughs> Poop is 100 funny. That's, <laughs> that's a fact. It's that is a fact. It's a thousand funny. That's a fact. In fact, uh, they played Quiplash in uh, my son's uh, uh, YouTube thing last night, 
And one of the questions was, what's the perfect song to sing while you're taking a dump? And so Jake and I have been throwing those back and forth. Uh, my latest was Don't Look Back by Boston. But anyway, so we, <laughs> he, he won that one. At least I think you weren't he, throwing the poop back and forth. <laughs> so, you know, poop jokes are always, always funny. Will Hafner in the uh, the chat here. Quiplash is quite fun. It actually might be fun. Jake suggested that we might play Quiplash in one of our chats. Um one day because that would be a lot of fun to, to broadcast and it would probably not stay PG 13. I, I wanted to address a comment that will made about the Cobra mountain. He said, you want to hide a Ninjago snake dude in it. And I just think that's funny because will is too young to know who Serpentor is. <laughs> no, yeah. so, you know, ah, right. uh, will just, just go Google GI Joe Serpentor and you'll understand why that comment was funny. To me. <laughs> this Mark <laughs> commands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's say, make sure I'll, if we got everybody going to Dana to get our old gray set of the week, if I, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh wait. Hey, can I just show off? I am making something for Boone's contest too. And I feel ashamed of it anyway. So I made a, uh, a shuttle sort of thingy bob, a Karelian shuttle here. Um, oh, so that's slick. That's nice. Hmm. So there it is right there. It uh, And it's, it's got removable panels and all that kind of stuff. So Yeah, I removable used, uh, panels. Oh, I'm not going to win. Oh, look how shiny my spaceship is. <laughs> oh, it's, it's classic Chris. Don't, 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 don't confuse that. That that part that's below the canopy there, Chris, is that one piece or did you finagle something? This? Yeah. Yeah, it's just uh oh, okay, it's that piece. Yeah, I yeah. No idea it, that, that married up so well with that felt uh, outfit. It does. There's not a lot of tile work that really works really well, so I kind of fudged that right there. But um oh, that's cool. But anyway, so it's got a door in the back and I gotta work on the landing gear. Uh so it'll I don't believe that's from Corellia. <laughs> it could be. It's got the canopy. I used I used this as a guide for the uh, this piece of concept art. So um, as an idea maker, so that was what I built this week. Anyway, all right, this is a Celestin ship, and you just put a Corellian front on it. Ooh. Hey, those are fighting words. If I knew what you're talking about, anyway, <laughs> I think Dana knows what I'm talking about. I know what you're I talking do. about. I, do. Uh, I, I think you didn't know what a Celestin was, Chris. Jeez, that's embarrassing. I know. I'm just playing the bit. Golly. <laughs> Boot you out of here, Mr. Playing the bit. Dad. <laughs> TV dad. Somebody just texted me going, what the heck? You don't know what occurred. Anyway. Um, all right. Let's go to Dana. Dana, what's going on in your world, buddy? Um, so, again, I had a long conference call yesterday. And uh, long conference calls to me mean open up studio and play because otherwise I'm sitting here bored off my caboose. Anyway, so I sat there and and I had this idea to do for Boone's um, uh, Imperial March and I still might do it, but I just wasn't feeling it because I just didn't feel like it was it was it was really just jiving with me. It's a it's a build up I want to do it's a, it's a it's a two cockpit X Wing and they called it a tandem. It was a as a Hasbro toy that they were going to do and that they shelved it when the power of the, the original power force line died. And so I've always seen that, that picture. And I'm like, Oh man, I need to make a Lego two seater X wing. And so I still might do it, but I probably won't have it done by the time of the end of the month. So I was having kind of a lucid dream. I don't know where it was coming from. And I thought about the old Marvel at Marvel star Wars comics from back in the seventies. And I saw some other things and all of a sudden things just started doing like this and I thought, I think I know what I need to do. So I sat down, worked it out, and then today I decided, well, let me see if I got all the parts for it. And ironically, I only had to swap out two pieces and modify a few things. And so I present to you Jackson <laughs> from the old 19 circa 79, 1980s uh, Star Wars Marvel comics. Uh, he was a, a, a fellow <laughs> smuggler with Han Solo uh, and uh, uh, Glenn O'Kellerison. And then there were a couple of people on Instagram, and, and Gil being one of them, a.k.a. Tora Nerd, that said he looks like Bucky O'Hare. Yeah. Who I had no idea who that was. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, sure, yeah, Bucky O'Hare. That's, yep. that's, 
That's fine. Well, you're getting you're making fun of me for not knowing what Solist was, which I do. You don't know who Bucky O'Hare is? Well, technically it's Sulist, but we won't we won't nah. write that <laughs> That's Southern. Thank you very much. Burn, but yes, I didn't burn. know who O'Hare was. And then once I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, how close does Bucky O'Hare yeah. look to yeah. Jackson? Yeah. And so yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure I can enter him into multiple contests, Star Wars or Bucky O'Hare. Anyway. Uh, so I'm still kind of tweaking with his gun, his blaster. He needs a second one. Trying to make hey, it. Hey, hey, hey! It's family show. Thank you. Because <laughs> uh, ironically, today uh, they announced what the new Black Series um, Star Wars figure, six-inch Black Series Star Wars figures are going to be, and we are getting a Jackson uh, six-inch Black Series figure. So I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" And they gave him two um, DL forty fours, which are uh, Han Solo. AKA Luke Skywalker, AKA Blasters, um, which I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but Han Solo and Luke Skywalker use the same blaster. Han Solo just has the scope on it, and Luke Skywalker doesn't. Everybody, put your glasses up. Yeah, there so you go. They give, they're giving they're not the same blaster in the uh, RPG source book, sir. Well, well, I'm just going by what we saw in the movies. But the the, the six inch very black series figure they're giving. Uh, Jackson, two of them. So I'm kind of trying to tweak with that, and I'll do that, and that'll be my official. Uh, <laughs> that'll be my, my my official Imperial March set that I'll have done. Uh, and I, I don't know if you guys are all doing this, and so I'm going to pimp this because Bruins not in the show. But if you haven't done it, Imperial March, uh, Star Wars build mock, and Boone is doing multiple giveaways off yes. of the different social media panels. So he, if you if you have it up, I believe by the twenty third. Uh, don't, don't quote me on there. Like he said it yesterday. It was like five days from now. Uh, he's doing a random drawing for all things that have Imperial March across the four platforms. So it's going to be Instagram, Flickr, uh, YouTube, and I think the other one was Facebook. And then up to the thirty first, if you're also still hashtagging Imperial March, twenty uh, first. There we go. Uh, he's also doing, he's got a panel of pseudo judges who they might be that, uh, will be reviewing all of the entries across the four platforms. And there will be a judging for that one as well to also get some cool prizes. Uh, if you go check out Boone's Instagram page, his Facebook, YouTube, you can see the video for that. I just encourage you just because I think it's awesome. Imperial March. I mean, how, how simple was that? By the way, March hair. Uh, uh, yeah, by the way, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dad to cats. What do I know? I, I, I bet you twenty bucks he has his contest judged before I have ours judged. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take contests. Speaking I'll of contests, that. we never had the Christmas contest judged. We all won for the Christmas. <laughs> we, actually, it I think was Chris the was the winner for the Christmas judging because it's Chris. So it's Christmas. Right. It's Chris. It's yeah. You can't anyway. Spell Christmas without. Unless you use the X, and that's the yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Moving right along. So, uh, but if, if, one quick before I move on to the El Grubix of the week again, go look up Imperial March. There's some cool stuff out there. You saw Meredith is doing that. Uh, go out, do that fun stuff. Star Wars, you can't go wrong. Anyway, uh, Chris, go ahead and let's switch to the other. We'll do the this old Grubix of the week. Here we go. Oh, week, great, great, week, week, son week, of the week, 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 And 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 I have to put a disclaimer up here. This is this is I, I'm presenting this week's set because I don't want us to seem like we're elitist and we only do space sets. So wait, 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 wait. we're not elitist ooh. because we kind of are. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> but we are not doing it. We are not doing a space set this week. We got have you for fifty nine thirty eight. Oh my god! Finally, oh, I so and remember. Scream that Jeff's not in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> ah, who knows? Maybe he'll show up or catch it later. But anyway, <laughs> so moving right along, Oasis Ambush Theme Adventures Dash Desert from 1998. A whole whopping 77 pieces. I was really surprised how few pieces are in this set, but you did get three minifigures. Granted, one of them is a skeleton, but you gotta love that headdress for the for the Egyptian pharaoh piece type thing going on. Retail price in 1998 was a whole whopping eight dollars. Old tan price. <laughs> Use price. <laughs> uh, we'll run you about twenty five bucks, and if you can find one in box, sixty nine 
And moving right along. Move along. Uh, nice. <laughs> is it cool? Rob's got some cash if he's still got those in, in box. I'm just saying. Yep. <laughs> Why is it cool? Cool printed part. Only one printed part. But it is really cool. It's got some cool hieroglyphs on it. But the stickered parts on there for the for the panels, fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, hieroglyph pieces. Uh, there, are, there are some cool hieroglyph pieces in general that Lego has done. Uh, but these ones were color, so it's just, just fantastic. I love it. Uh, <laughs> I can hear that guy in my head. <laughs> uh, not to steal Jeff's thunder, but Johnny Thunder and Lord Sam Sinister were in this set together. Fantastic, awesome adventure desert scene. Gotta love it. Um, along with that, you got a cool palm tree. I, I, I you know people love or hate those old style palm trees. You really can't use the parts for too much other than making a palm tree, but I think they're fantastic. So uh, the fact that it's in there was a cool deal, especially for the small price on this set. Got to go, got to go with it. Last thing, fun play features, which I'll share with you in a minute. Uh, it may not seem like there is a lot going on in this set, but there really is. So we'll, we'll cover that in a second. So again, this week's Overhead Brick set of the week is 5938 Oasis Ambush. Got to love your Johnny Thunder. Kind of love your Johnny Thunder. So uh, go ahead and switch back to cameras, and I'll, I'll show the, the play feature. Show again. Cool palm tree. Got to love them. I think these are fun. Uh, Actually made out of section parts that you could bend as well. Yes, it does. Yeah. As a matter of fact, good, good. Uh, thank you, Chris, for reminding me to point out that this is a bendable. Bend him like a Selston. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> on. Anyway, but uh, and of course, you got the, the skeleton with the wiggly arms. Uh, who was it that had the 3D printed uh, on on Julian's show? A 3D printed skeleton with the wiggly arms? I, I think I need one of those. I don't know why. Uh, that was was that Ken Marlo Bricks? I think it was. I think it was fantastic. Yeah. So, but again, th this little set it doesn't seem like much. You got your little Anuma statue up here, which is kind of cool. And the fact that he's made with the the treasure chest in oh, black, yeah. and he's got gold coins yeah. in there, which is cool. But my favorite part, and it's kind of wonky, but I still mm -hmm. like it, is that you can pull on the lever here, and it opens up the crypt. Yeah. And that's where you would put your uh, your skeleton slash mummy. Granted, it would have been cool if they had actually done a mummy in this set versus the skeleton, but Lego yep. we'll, mm -hmm. doesn't always hit it on all, on all six cylinders. Um, four, if we're lucky. Uh, but anyway, so but very cool using the whole the whole chain. I mean, there's a chain mechanism here. Basically, it's just holding on a chain attached to the lever. Simple, cool. simple but fun. And again, you can see the uh, the sticker pieces on these panels are fantastic. And of course, we got that one one by four uh, tile with the cool printed pieces on yep. there for the different set. Uh, fun stuff. I actually, my, my wife is a big fan of Egyptology. She was going to originally go to school for Egyptology. Uh, knows more about Egypt than I ever care to, but I do need to go back and get these all of this, these sets just so we can display them in the front room so I can kind of inch my Lego hobby into the Egyptian room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Uh, Meredith's got to run. Y'all wish her good night. Tell little one we hope she feels better. Hope she's better. Good night, Pink Wheels. This way, I don't have to talk about how much money I spend in Lego. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk for you guys. I'll, I'll really, I'll, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll still sign uh, I got a feeling, though, she probably spends more on automobiles than she does Lego. I'm just oh, thinking. Oh, no. Tires. Yeah, tires. Tires alone she spends more on than she does on Lego, than all of us probably. <laughs> That's right. That's for, right. For right. that Egyptian set, that tre treasure chest in black, is that more rare? Because I only remember seeing that in brown. I, I think it is only in that. I got it in lavender. <laughs> and I also there's a uh, of there's course a, there's another piece on this set. It's the double double inverted wedge oh, together okay. yeah. in black. Yeah. Again, one of the few sets that that piece is in as well. Yeah, oh. that's a it's a handy dandy piece, and yeah. they use it a lot. So and, and then the fact that it's in black. I mean, we get them in gray and dark gray and all yeah. sorts of colors, but white. But not black very often, and that was one of the few sets that it came in. Right. Hey, yeah, um, Chris. Just before we carry on to the main event, could you share this? I'm gonna try to share something on screen that's going back to Magnus's build. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, oh, 
Uh, we got somebody here. Rich is here. How you doing, man? We need to say hey. this. So, what's going on, man? All right, are you hey. sharing that? That uh, yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Dana. I have I'm every trying. single one of them. Hey, while you're doing I have that, multiple copies. Why you doing that? <laughs> let, me show, let me let me show you some Star Wars cred here. I want to show this. Okay, this from 1978, Ooh. the Marvel Star Wars. Okay, comic book that. I read so much the 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 cover is missing. Well, this has got the green Darth Vader with the red eyes and everything. This is classic stuff right here. This is the that's best. awesome. That's well loved, Chris. Well loved. Oh, dude. Hey, but the best part is I drew I drew an X wing on it when I was. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> right there. See. So there. Keep your solace to yourself. Anyway, all right. So, <laughs> Chris, I actually have that with the cover and issue two. Somewhere in here. <laughs> oh, shut up. You bought it last year. No, <laughs> no, no, no. That was just from my head when I was a kid in 1977. I also have the big giant X-Men number, or the big, big giant G.I. Joe number one that goes along with those, same size. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. I, I love, the actually, the art style and that, that original stuff, the blasters, the laser blasters, and the way the flash. So cool. Yeah. Oh, All right. Boy. You got it in there. You got it in there. You got it yeah. in there. There it is. Yeah. So this is actually the oubliette that uh, Magnus was show showing there, I believe. Uh, oh, the dome on the yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So this they take her to the basement, they toss her down in this thing, and, yeah, there's this big dome oubliette underneath. So, yeah. How crappy a ninja is that, that Storm Shadows just gets pulled in with a chain? <laughs> he was having a bad day. <laughs> He was distracted by her skin tight outfit that still has overalls somehow. So, hey, hey, don't knock it. Don't knock it. No, no complaints. This is this is from a this is from a, a comic um, that is known as the the silent issue. Yes, it, it was made in a rush, so they didn't have time to uh, to include any any and any speech. So it's all uh, it's a it's a story sort of represented in pictures. And also the uh, the guy who wrote all the card backs and wrote all the GI Joe series and that he illustrated the thing in the initial breakdowns and then the finishing artist came in and just drew over the top. So the whole thing is actually really a love child of Larry Hama. So yeah, that was who I actually met was and signed some of my stuff. Really nice, nice guy. What what yes. issue was that in? Do you remember? Twenty one. Ooh, anyway. I actually won that. the Schuster Award that that year, so yeah. Uh, Gil, so you know Larry. Larry comes to uh, Joe Atlanta. Uh, yeah, there. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen so, that. Yeah, if, if you ever get a chance to talk, to him, he's a super nice guy, like yeah. a really nice guy. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, let's say Rich just came in. Let's do a quick. Uh, hey, how you doing, Rich? Uh, what's up with you, man? Uh, still working a lot, really hard on something. Yes, it's not filled in yet. Those bins are empty, you faker. What is going Look, on? I have all the stuff in here. What do you want to do? You want to see? You want to see in the big bins yet? No, I don't want to see in your big bins. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It, I I had to go out yesterday and today since it was rainy and nobody was out. I put up. UV film on some windows. Cool. I also pick. I also fixed one of my uh, roller things, special roller things. That was a a uh, store display. That's Star Wars. It's like uh, just imagine with Darth Vader and stuff. And that's going to go on a window to obscure the inside. Gotcha. So. Lots of things I don't know. Today. I think that bearded rich was way more productive. Way more productive, yeah. <laughs> and then tomorrow I have to go to another town to do some stuff and have lunch. And uh, maybe Saturday I'll have more things done. Yeah. Unbearded rich looks a lot like this. So, um, yeah. Just Thanks. saying. I, I'm, singing, I'm just singing along, doing nothing. All right. Good deal. So, have you had any neighbors come by and go, what the heck is going on? Not yet, because nobody can see in here. Oh, I got That's you. That's the point. That's the the point. Big... I don't want. Uh, I'm I'm about less than a week away from actually putting a display in the push out because that's what I was focusing on today for UV protection. I'm not sticking anything in there until I got UV protection, and 
I'm going to, yeah, Nick, small parts room. Yes, <laughs> it's, a, it's a large small parts room. Once I get the UV protection up, I'm going to put out my uh, uh, Forbidden Island Mega Mock and put the sea out there in the pump out. It's it's uh, four feet deep and nine feet long. So nice. lots of sea and the Forbidden Island and people will be able to see. And I also have to, when I go out tomorrow, I'm going to get some sort of fabric so that nobody can see in, but they'll be able to see the mock easily. Just so have, have, have you already checked to see if that thing survived the move? Yes, I can actually see it. Do you want to see it? Yeah. Sure, do a quick swing by. <laughs> I do. <laughs> do. We'll do a quick course, swing by. Maddie, uh, see it all. Good work, Maddie. Thank you. That's all right. Where did it go? Where did I put that thing? How could you miss it? It's nice. Wait, something as big as a pool table and you can't find it? <laughs> <laughs> That's as big as a pool table. I can't. Yeah, I can find it. I swear I'll find it. Where did I put it? Okay, it's not there. I have to also find it. That's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have it back here? Yes, there it is. Aha. Huzzah. Yes. Rich, those are drawers. Yeah, I know those are drawers. Those are my <laughs> drawers. But what what am I what am I looking at? Uh, you're about to look at the Forbidden Island and its uh, protected case. There we go. Oh, it's not it's not it's not assembled. It's in the box. In this box, but it's uh, modular. So it's Seems to be out. foggy on Mystery Island. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a fire in your room. <laughs> All better? right. Yeah, that's good, man. Well, I'm glad you're getting settled in. I can't wait for your neighbors to freak out and, you know, um, all that kind of stuff. Can't wait to hear about yeah. that. It's going to be a major display and the one of the pop outs. And, you know, I can't wait for Christmas and that kind of thing, too, because I have a big uh, Christmas town to put out, plus uh, some uh, Christo Christian centric. Other mock things to put out, like a nativity scene and things like that. Cool. Uh, Here we go yeah. again with the theater. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. What was that? Here we go again. What is happening? I don't know. <laughs> things are crumbling. There's shields are down. Uh, Con hit us, you know, in the warp drive. I don't know what has happened anyway. So, all right. So, let's talk a little bit. We, we get to our subject. Um, we can all admit, <laughs> we can all admit that we've snuck some 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 ABS plastic by our parents, our significant others. We can all admit it. This is a safe space, but uh, we can delete parts of this video <laughs> later. <laughs> um, but the first thing is, um, you know, the report came out that Lego has made like a bajillion dollars during COVID. Uh, and everything. It'll be interesting to see if that bubble pops after things get better. And we we, we are hope so. we are grateful that things are getting better. It seems um, and everything. But um, a lot of people had a lot of extra money. They didn't travel, so they maybe spent it on the brick and everything. But us, um, the forty plus years that that I've been in it, and some of you more, some of you less, um, we sunk some serious money in it. So. Do any of you want to talk about how you budget for Lego? Because I'll just go ahead and say I don't. I'm like, how much is in the account? Yep, I'm gonna <laughs> click that. I'm just going. That is that is budget. And then I got a. What is this PayPal? By the way, you can pay for Lego.com through PayPal, so that it doesn't put Lego.com on your bank. <laughs> tip number one. So this is tips and tricks night. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, first PayPal of all, you should just go get yourself right. a PayPal account mm -hmm. so that so that nobody knows what you're buying anyway. That's right. That's right. Not, not that I not that I'm suggesting you do something nefarious. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. And, and look, if you are if you're hiding credit cards from your significant other or spouse, that is that's actually a marital that's... issue you need to communicate and you need to take care of because you that's not good so listen we're not we're not talking about that although maybe it happens but anyway um so i'd like to go first all right sure go ahead okay so number one we have a budget we have a monthly budget of our income back in the before times when i had a job and was 
bringing Buku money in, I had a three hundred dollar a month budget, not counting say special events like brick fair or something like that. Dude, how many months have you been alive? I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, it's been a while. So we do we do something. Uh, I'm gonna just go bring it up real quick. We do Dave Ramsey. Every dollar has a has a name and a place, and we, there's been an allotment for Lego. That's good. I also had a an allotment for lunches, spending money for my PayPal. And sometimes PayPal might actually buy some brickling things. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I, so things came in sideways often, used to. But I, I, right now I'm at a standstill trying to outfit my new home and my new space. So this is, this is my Lego budget now, these things. <laughs> the empty bins, <laughs> the empty bins that are going to be converted into full bins, and they will be full bins because I have stuff. Yeah, and uh, and Ram the the Ramsey thing that's you know where you, you try to hold no debt or you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so we have no, we like have we had we actually had to take on a a small mortgage for this place, but the plan is to pay that off. And then we'll be debt free completely. I so, had a zero credit score for almost ten years. Because you didn't take out a credit card. Because I had no credit card debt. I had no. I had no debt at all. That wouldn't. I, I cannot say that personally. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But, uh, but uh, three hundred dollars a month. Did you even use the envelopes? You put three hundred dollars in a Lego envelope, and that was your Lego budget. Did you do that whole no, thing? No, we just knew it. We just knew. I know those who are like Shiite uh, budgeters like that that put money yeah, yeah. in envelopes, right? So not, nothing wrong with it. We just no, didn't do that. No, that's actually it's wise. You can't control years. it. What was that? My parents used to do that. Yeah, My yeah. Parents used to do that, and there would there was like four envelopes when I was a kid. There was like gas, food. Uh, I don't know, and then like miscellaneous entertainment and sometimes we get to the end of the month and we want to go to the movies and they were like well the money's all gone and we would loan them money to go to the movie theater and they would pay us back at the end of the, the first of the month was there an exchange rate for that i mean did you was it you know no we interest? just got to go see a movie when we wanted to i got you. but you know you. it's 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 kind of interesting you talk about the envelope thing because that's how i budget my stuff like i've got like five or six different accounts and when i get paid the money goes in shunted this goes in for bills this goes in for food this goes for that and then the other and there's a certain amount that goes into the nerd fund which is and it's actually called on my account nerd fund and <laughs> and like that's where it's at right and like and if the money's there i'll admit it it burns a hole in there till it's mm -hmm. gone just like chris was saying but um, but uh, but yeah, and like the only other way that I'll find that I'll exceed that <laughs> is if I <laughs> is if I know that I'm going to be selling something that'll offset the price. I got you. Yeah, I got you. I, I, I can I gotta put that back up, Brom. I can just I, I can see that happening. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I love it. That's I would live in the Vulcan Brom house. <laughs> Awesome. That's that's why he's just as smart as he is. For Christmas, they wrote dissertations and shared with the family. In <laughs> our right, placemats were, were were doctorials. It was perfect. <laughs> All right. Anybody else want to talk about your how you you manage your spending or not manage your spending? Never had a budget. Never going to have a budget. I do the best I can with what I've got and what God gives me. Uh, marketplace is a good place to go sometimes, and I get the bulk lot for cheap. Whatever I can twist the wife's arm for. Oh, and for all you guys that can't have Lego in your living room, nana, 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 we got tons of it in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I also, I also have no debt. That's good. I have no money either, but no debt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually burning a hole in my stomach because this is the first time I've had a car payment in about four years, so I'm not exactly excited about that. No, 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 no. I, like, <laughs> I like what Nick has to say about envelopes for gas, food, toys, and air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> huh? 
I, I had a thought about having a Laker representative talk to us about money, and basically it was just that gift spinning in a window the whole time, and we just switched to the the the, the, the Lego, and it would just be the money spinning. Um, but <laughs> anyway, all right. Anybody else want to talk about budgeting or how you do it? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a budgeting comment, but um, the jungle jungle. I, I live with an enabler. <laughs> so, so it'll come down to where I'll sit there and I'll actually try to think, okay, this set is $350. It's got a GWP that I may sell or, you know, hold on for 10 years and try and sell later. Uh, there's double points. Uh, there's a full day. Or what, I'm trying to calculate how to do it the best way to, to maximize my Lego dollar. And then I'll come home. I'll show it to my wife, and she'll go, well, why didn't you get two? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's crazy. So And so and, and, and then again, you know, there will be this there will be these times where you're like, I really want to get this, but I don't really feel like I should because I just spent this whole big whopping cash of money last month on Lego because there was a big clearance at Walmart and Target, and I racked up, you know, probably X number credit card debt. And then this cool new set comes out that comes with the GWP, and it's like, well, are you going to get it? Well, I am now because <laughs> you basically told me it's okay. <laughs> so it's 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 a plus and a minus because it, you know we're, we're two children basically <laughs> that have no parents. <laughs> that, you know we shouldn't do that. That maybe we should save for when we retire. Um, but in some instances, there are some sets. Who knows that if I turn around and sell it later. It is kind of like saving for my retirement. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, well, this Lego is supposed to, unless the bubble pops, you are you got a material that will be going up in value. So, well, it, it, and that that's kind of funny because um, where where Lego has kind of monopoly, it's it's become my new world. So you know, I used to have multiple hobbies, comic book fan for for decades. Making costumes, brewing beer. I've got a Jeep. That's basically just a hole in the street that I pour money into. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and so here we are now. I'm I've, I've kind of dropped all my hobbies to just do Lego. Now, granted, COVID probably helped with that. So that's a double-edged sword in in general. Yeah. But at the same time, though, if something were to happen and I and we were on hard times, I could easily flip what I have and get back either what I've put into it or probably a little more. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I'm not saying that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that was, maybe there's like second dinner or th third dinner could be candy. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so it, it's been kind of weird that we get to, you know, we, we, you know, we are childrenless. We've got cats. Granted, we now have five cats. So that takes up a little more money, but not, like a child who's getting ready to go to college. So we do have, I mean, I know Matthew and I, we joke about this, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're both dinks. <laughs> <laughs> it's still one of my favorite commercials of all time. <laughs> I work in IT and it, it, it is such an accurate statement. <laughs> I like that he's rolling up the ball of yarn. That's my favorite yeah. part of the whole <laughs> <laughs> That's his lasso. He's like, I got to rein in the cats. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it is true, Brown. Five cats is five cats. Crazy. That we, we've gone over an edge. The sad thing is, is that Matthew and I, are, well, actually, and Chris and Mark, we all know somebody who has more cats than I do. I believe double. So I'm still safe. <laughs> <laughs> it's good if there's always someone crazier than you. Exactly. It, it justifies. There's always someone existence. crazier than you. It justifies your existence. It justifies yeah. Well, I think I, I think I mentioned this before. Um, I live in a house with seven cats and now a dog. See, Maddie's right there. She knows. But we have the five of the cats stay in the catio because they're bad cats and they just hang out in there. And then the other two roam the house. So. So all I can see is five cats on the on on the uh, patio smoking cigarettes and drinking yeah, beer. That's exactly. <laughs> it's so bad. We just sprinkle some. We run in there, throw some catnip on the floor, and run out. That's what this is. Anyway, so true. So true. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, all right. Um, so let's think about that. When you talk to spend, anybody else want to talk, talk about your budget or whatever? Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Manny. So I don't have a budget, um, but I did get a job just to pay for Lego. So I worked at the store for three years and every dollar that I earned, I spent on Lego and I, and I got it at the employee price. So I got twice as much for my dollar. And even for a while after I left the store, I still had a friend that gave me the discount. So oh, wait, 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 wait. We're not going to that part of the topic yet because yes, you and I will blow that story out of the water. Yeah. But, um, the other what? thing I did is once I left the store, I started a BrickLink store. So in theory, the BrickLink store is paying a significant chunk of what I spend. And it does, but it's kind of episodic. So BrickLink sales come and go. But I often flip my GWPs. And, you know, I, I'm constantly shop, looking at the angle of, is it double points? Can I flip this GWP for 40 bucks? You know, is that a better percentage off? So... I do not have a specific number, um, but the other thing that I do is I increasingly um, only buy big sets because I'm running out of room to display things. And so the question isn't, do I want the set? The question is, where would it go in my home or my office? <laughs> and the answer is getting harder to answer increasingly. <laughs> so as there's fewer and fewer display areas, it's getting a little easier to say no to those mid-priced small sets. Um, for me, basically, if it's like a Star Wars Star Wars set of a ship they've never made before, and maybe will only ever make once because it's in the EU, I'm going to buy it. If it's a UCS set, I'm going to buy it. If it's a big architecture set, I'm going to buy it. Um, and then I would say I probably buy half a Lego idea. So it's really driven by what's come on the market. Is it something that I'd want to display in my house for 10 years? And if the answer is yes, I buy it. Um, and I and then I say, well. I better sell some stuff on uh, BrickLink. <laughs> so when it comes to sort of like sets, like not clickets and whatever, but you build and display all of it? So if it's not something that's to be built and displayed, it may be parted out. So like occasionally I'll pick up stuff on blowout clearance for like a Batman set or a friend set. And right. it's built once and the disassembled and it goes into the parts rack. So okay. most most of what I have is built and currently sitting out for display. There are a couple of series of stuff that I displayed for a while. I put back in the box, put back in the instructions. So I have all the Scooby Scooby Doo. I have all of the Lone Ranger. Which I love those lines. So those aren't parted out. And there's a number of Star Wars sets of midsize vehicles that I put back in the box. But for the most part, if it's not displayed in my house it's getting parted into the loose parts collection so let me ask you a question you pretty much sell off all of your figs too right i mean is that that it depends like if it's harry potter i don't care at all about harry potter but i bought diagonal alley for the building so i i flipped the figs and it paid for half of the set right there plus i got vip points plus there was a gift of purchase all of which i sold so i ended up getting it for less than 50 percent of the cost, retail cost, because I did all those things. Um, but, you know, I mean, if it's Star Wars, I'm not going to flip the figures, but there are things where I just don't care about the figs and I'll, I'll flip them. Yeah. Uh, there's a good question. There's a good question. Do you guys buy uh, to build specific projects or buy to just add to the collection without plans for those parts? What do you guys do? I mean, I, I spent a lot. Of, I'm going to bricks and pieces for the, the things I want to build with and new parts that I think I want to build with. And in general, if I see a set that I buy multiples of, it's because I want it. Like I bought the Target has the Lion, the the new Lion Creator three in one. Tons of that yellow or the orangey yellow. So I bought two of those the other day because I want to build with it. But what about y'all? So it's a, it's kind of funny because I can see where people used to probably buy multiple copies of sets because there wasn't the ability to go out to bricks and pieces. Look or uh, uh, bricks, uh, brick link or or brick owl or something like that. So it was it was probably more common, probably 10, 20 years ago, to buy multiple copies of set just to build with. Yep. I don't ever really buy sets with the intention of that it's going to be for parts, unless it's a clearance set that I'm thinking, oh, this is cheap Lego, and it, even if it doesn't have parts, or even if it's only got some parts, I'll use. The other parts I can trade with Matthew 
or Chris, or Mark, <laughs> because maybe they, it's something that they want. Usually it's Matthew because he's looking for strange colors, and so I just farm him my strange color bins. Um, although now I'm starting to hang, well, sorry to tell you this, but I'm starting to hold on to my strange colors because we're, we're cheating getting these mock contests where on. I find that I need them. This is like, one of Matthew's bins that I have at my house right now. Yeah. <laughs> Swapping colors. <laughs> so, um, so taken, I, I, I used to just buy stuff. Home. I used to just buy stuff just to have multiple stuff, right. like uh, buildings, like the the creator buildings, uh, Green Grocer or whatever. I'd buy a couple copies of that, and Brickling was established, but it's you know it didn't have the gravitas that it does now. Uh, now I'll buy a large set just to buy the large set and go, if I need to modify it, which I do, uh, I'll go to Brick, uh, to Bricklink and get whatever parts I need to, to do it up. But I'll buy bulk brick from charity and clean it up, you know, thrift stores, whatever, just to have bulk brick to, just to have parts to do other things so that I don't have to go to Bricklink. <laughs> And buy specific things. Well, and, and that's oh, kind of the funny thing because, like, um, I've got a project I'm working on, and I had, and I had to theorize it in my head that it was going to be cheaper to buy three sets to get the parts I needed versus brick linking or bricks and pieces all of it. And, and, and that was new for me. I, I'd never had that that happen to me. It was just usually easier to figure out. Oh, hey, I'm going to build this. And I'll create an inventory or a, a pick a want list on Bricklink, and I'll just order it. But it wound up being cheaper to actually buy three copies of the set, and I winding up with extra pieces that I can either sell or trade later on. So yeah, I cool. bought I bought two Grand Emporiums and was able to make five levels out of it instead of the four that you would get with two of those sets. Because I also pushed it out to thirty-two by uh, no so. Sorry, 48 by 48 instead of 32 by 32. But that's a whole different concept. That's a whole different concept because there are lots of people who will buy multiple copies of the same set just to make that set bigger. Or maybe it's a set that doesn't have a back. You know, they didn't, didn't, you know, Lego just give you a facade to the front. And they're like, no, 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 I want the back too. I want a a whole building. Yeah. And and, and and it makes sense for me because I do displays or. I still plan on doing displays. And, you know, in, in the in the old old days, all I did was buy classic space. And then when I started playing AD and D, I started buying castle sets because I wanted to use castle Lego and castle parts and the gray parts for that for making, you know, as a as a game master or, D, or D, dungeon master kind of sets for an outfitting for your fig for your characters. So then I was Castle for a long time. And it wasn't until the 2000s when I actually joined a lug and a Lego train group that I started really getting into buildings and doing trains. I mean, I always loved trains. I had HO set when I was a kid. But I wanted Lego train and I wanted Lego buildings. So now I buy those small and intermediate sets, the cars and the trucks and the boats and things like that just to go on the layout as as uh, the ambiance. Yeah. Yeah. But so, you know, it, it also case in point, when we brought this up, you brought up the old gray set of the week, um, that, that, uh, the Egyptian set and everything. And then, and cause I remember doing it too, buying multiples of that when it was on clearance, that was when Walmart, every Walmart had like super multiple yeah. copies and you could yeah. get them on clearance. Yeah. And we would buy the mess out of those, um, because of the deal, but it was also part building, um, like I said, it had that couple of rare parts that you needed a multiples of. That's how we did it um, yeah. then. And that, and that was also back before Lego was on consignment with so many um, companies too, right? So they would, yeah. you know, they would deep discount. Like here, you never get more than twenty percent off, like at max. But sorry, before we get onto that, I think that Magnus was also saying had something for budgeting, right? Yeah. Well, I um, I am known as. Uh, organized about my Lego budgeting as I'd like. Um, I just want to say, uh, let's see, I, I, a couple of points. I know someone who runs a Bricklink store. He has an arrangement with his wife that he can uh, spend as much on uh, new Lego as he makes in his Bricklink store. 
that works. So. And, uh, it's an incentive for him to to be active with his wrecking store, and I think that funds his Lego. Um, so you know, different things work for different people. I, I you know, I, I want to. Um, as as the person here with this sort of stupidly big castle behind me, uh, I, I want to acknowledge. I want to acknowledge that, like, this is a. You know, at at, at a larger scale, this becomes a very expensive ho hobby. It's oh. not like, it's it's not like buying you know ten thousand dollar watches, but it's like. I'm really grateful that I can afford to do this. I don't want to. Uh, I want to acknowledge that you know we're we're really lucky to be able to do this. This is this is an expensive thing, you know. Yeah. So, and, case in point, and this is kind of funny, and this is a, a small soapbox, and I'll get off it quickly. So, in our lug, um, we have we we don't have a good Lego show here in the state. There, it, it's been attempted, it's been tried, and it never seems to really happen. So, the best thing that can happen for us is we drive two hours and forty five minutes to Birmingham, in Alabama. And as you, as you all, and probably everybody in the show or in the peanut gallery, you've been to Brick Fair as, a, as, a, as someone who's just playing, and you realize that you're ponying up, depending on what time of the year it is, whether you pre-order pre, pre or pre-sign up, whether it's $65, $75, $80, whatever it's going to be. And we've had several members in our lug who, who, who have basically just planted their feet in the sand and said no. I'm not going to pay somebody to allow me to display at a show because, you know, they're $65. I have yet to come home from Brick Fair without getting $65 to $100 in free stuff to, that, that more than exceeds what I have paid for my, to go in, in, in there. So I, I use Dana, that example. Dana always wins the raffle. <laughs> not always. Not always. You won it too. Don't even try to do that. Don't don't throw shade on me. I would, <laughs> the, the funny I thing is, last time. the, the, the funny thing is, is we're talking every time. $65 to go and display at Brick Fair. You can burn $65 on Lego storage without yeah. blinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, oh, yeah. we are not. I mean, this is like somebody saying that they're looking for discount spark plugs for their Ferrari that they have three <laughs> of in the garage. It, 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 it blows my mind, and and I love these people. I do because they're 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 they're, they're kindred spirits. And I love them. They're fantastic. But it's like, come on, six. It's it's almost the point where I'm like, hey, tell you what, I will pay. Your sixty-five dollars for you to come and display, but everything you get free, you have to give to me. <laughs> that's uh, okay. that's so a uh, Pete Slug post. Dana is right calling now. Pete Slug post. Dana is calling you out for being cheapskates. Okay, thank that's you. Right. I, I, so, so this and we right have here, a board meeting on Saturday, and I'm going to say it again. <laughs> eight but, eight three drawer tall ten. That's a thousand dollars right there. Right, right behind me. Right. I mean, just, just for storage. storage. Just you, storage. Spend, storage. you spend eighty dollars and you go to Brick Fair for the four days. That's yeah. twenty dollars a day. And trust me, yeah. I have a great time, and I'm gonna win all kinds of stuff, even if I don't. And I'm gonna have fun, day. and I got friends who will give me shit. That sorry, well, stuff, stuff for for nothing. And hey, I need a couple of these. I'll just take them. You know. Yeah. Yep. I will say the big expense for going to um, <laughs> the big expense for going to a convention like that is hotel and stuff. So if you can bunk yep. up with somebody and yep. travel and stuff like that, so that's not always exactly the cheap. I mean, but you do get a lot of stuff. The best part about going to a convention like that is then there's a vendor there with the scratch tables that you can yeah. go through, and you can sit there because you know there's so much free time, no public. And just scratch the theirs and find rare parts that they're just selling for weight and just load up. So, yeah. um, and, that's and, and th this is the kind of thing, and, and, and I think it, it kind of leads into sort of the next logical question that comes out of this. Okay, you got your budget, whether it's for the convention, for your purchases, you know, whatever it is. Now, what's your justification for spending, right? <laughs> and I find that that's where it really gets interesting. Right, right. All right. Wait, Maddie, what you got? Um, so 
I'm kind of known as a pathological liar in my family. I like to lie about a lot of things. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. <laughs> I'm kind of known as a pathological liar in my family. And I know my brother will probably be watching this later because he always watches the reruns. But it's true. Like, you know, if I'm trying to like hide or cover something up, like I have no problem like white lying it. Anyways, so I got, like, <laughs> I got the, um, the police station set, what, like in January? Uh, no, fe uh, February. And I was like, my mom was like, oh, we're going to buy a $200 set. And I was like, yeah, it's for my birthday. Okay. He's like, okay, no problem. Birthday present for yourself, whatever. And then the Hogwarts castle popped up. And my mom's like, you're going to spend another $200 on Lego. And I was like, yeah, it's for my birthday. And then she's like, hmm? And then yesterday I went to the Lego store and she was like, you're going to spend more money at the Lego store? And I was like, yeah, it's my birthday. <laughs> Matt, Maddie, can I, hey, can I point out? How many birthdays do you have a year? <laughs> how many birthdays a year do you, does your mom think you have? Maddie, Maddie can, I pop, can, I, can I point out that you have uh, chatted up at least two Lego employees in the last month to get free stuff? So. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> all the birthday she missed before. She it up for. Oh, Don't I'm you know? really good at it. But um, yeah, like last year's and the year before, and the year before that, uh, I, you know, birthday. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Let's. I mean, all right. So motivation. I mean. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to build the big fleet. The M, you know, whatever. So. I guess that's always the motivation. It's like, oh, I need those parts. I could probably use those later, you know, to build something, not even knowing what I'm getting them for, but to have the potential at your hands when you need it. I mean, right. obviously there's a whole lot, well, there's a whole lot of potential right here in this gut that I'm not using right now, but there's a whole lot of potential in this room. I could not eat for like a month and I'd be okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I, got, I, got, that, I got that much in my hump here, but... My Lego room has got tons of Lego that I'm probably never, thank you, Brick Smith, never going to use. <laughs> but you might. But I might. That's right. The The risk reward thing is like, dude, and and look, I'm looking at my two by three drawers for um, white two by three plates, and I'm running low. I know where they are. They're in all the mocks around here, but I'm like, well, yeah. man, I need to go on Brick Link. I'm not going to take that thing apart. I just, I like that one. I'll yeah, no, no, it's yeah, in a box. You know. I'm not taking oh, it apart. I'm that apart. But yeah, so that the 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 potential to have the bricks you need when you need them and not have to wait because I hate stopping. If I stop a mock with waiting for parts, it usually doesn't get done. Yeah. Um, may I ask this question? May I ask this question? Sure. How many people have gone or are in the middle of building something, and they could brick link to get a part that they need, but how many people have turned around and gone out to Walmart, Target, wherever to buy a set? Specifically for a part that they need to finish something. At me, I used to do that. Yeah, I used to do that. Yeah, I mean the fact that I have this dinosaur, which is awesome, and he's like eleven dollars. He was like half the purchase of the set because I needed a piece, and this set happened to have that part in it. And I went out and bought it. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I, just I did. Didn't wait to to get for to show up in the mail. No, I I I, I am a instant gratification junkie. So I had to go and buy that set. I can think on at least three different occasions. Now, granted, it's not we're not talking about like a three hundred dollars set for one part. We're talking like a poly bag or a ten dollar set or you know a twenty dollar set, something like that. And what makes it even more tempting is <laughs> Jeff. I'm is just gonna call Amazon, out today. Amazon tonight. <laughs> Like when you when you've got Amazon one day delivery, it's like okay, I can wait a week and a half for Bricklink, or I can order the set off of Amazon. Exactly. There you go. See yep. you tomorrow. I, oh. I, I, ice cream truck. You're like right there in my driveway. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. See, By no, the I way, I mean, compl finally Lego shipped the thing I ordered Monday, but it has been in warehouse all week, and I've been yep. a little hacked about that. So I think we, on the private chat, I think all of us have gotten something shipped, but. Um, at, at Builder Q points out, uh, studio designs are especially dangerous. That's how I build now. I I build in studio is like my rough draft. And then I'll go to see, do I have the parts to build it? And then if I don't, click, brick link, or click, let's see how many, what sets this comes in. Oh, I can go get that. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I just want to point out, Dana, that... Um, the microphone's perfect. You, 
That is. You're yeah, saying, I mean, so saying. he was military before, and then hang, he hang looks on, like a rocker. And then once you said he looked like a rocker, I can't see anything else. So that's 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 yep. that's what he is. He's some kind of alien, yep. alien rock star. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, all right, Matt, I'm sorry we cut you off. Yeah, uh, just, yeah, what were you saying? Oh, I was just saying, you know, uh, Chris was saying that if he has to put something down, he doesn't usually pick it up if he has to wait for parts. But if you're doing the studio avenue, you have to wait. Uh, you know, and so I'm a waiter. Like, I, one of the reasons that I had to spend a week getting ready for my parents' visit is that the guest bedroom was completely covered with projects that I've set aside either because I ran out of parts and I was waiting for something or I, I sort of got bored with it and I wanted to move to something else. But um, you kind of have to, <laughs> I, I will go back and pick things back up. But sometimes they might sit there for six months. So, I mean, if you've got the space where you can let, sort of let that stuff sit around or you're ordering parts from studio and you can, you've can you got the patience to wait for them to come in, that works. So, um, but you can, you've got to have space to set stuff down and pick it back up later. Yeah. Uh, well, here's the thing that happens to me. And, and this is, you know, there's levels of your Lego hobby, you know, like, um, uh, you know, you're, you're buying pieces from Bricklink. Now, you, I mean, instead of sets, and here's when you have an old mock that's not finished and you start picking parts off of it to build the <laughs> current mock that you're on. Yeah. That's a, that's that, that you're getting way up in that level thing, but that's what happens. I need those parts. I need them now. And so I want to have them. And that's probably why I have such a collection here. So, um, and but the, the aggravating thing, and I think somebody else mentioned it is I, uh, Nick did. I've got all this Lego and I have a room, but I don't have enough sand green. <laughs> <It's so aggravating. laughs> well, and, and, and so that's and, the, and the, that's a great point because we get to a point where we start collecting certain parts because we know we need them and we're gonna use them. And like, I there was a point in time where I was doing if I got a, a bulk buy and I got all of these pins and whatever weird colors and i'd be like hey matthew you want to trade these with me and because i know he would use them but then i got to a point in time where i started doing some some challenges and i'm like oh man i should not have gotten rid of all that green that i that i had or or <laughs> that, you know a zero okay blue, so, blue so zero i have blue. a question for you all how right. often have you either a doubled up on something on your Bricklink order for extra parts for something you know you wanted because that store had them. Or B, Bricklink something because you you knew you had the parts in your question somewhere, but you didn't want to go find them. <laughs> my, my collection is very organized, so that never that one. But uh, you, you have a the, spreadsheet, the thing, man. Come on. Yeah. The thing that, it's color the thing that uh, I've been able to take advantage of over the years is we had a guy who would pay us the sort, and he did it by weight. He didn't care what part. So when I was an active sorter, uh, and you're allowed to keep you know five or ten percent by weight, I know that I need bricks and plates, and I chew through br bricks and plates as a building guy. What I don't need are a ton of slopes. I hardly ever use slopes, and so I I always keep a handful of every slope and every color, but I just don't need 20 of them. And so I would give those back to the brick bank sorter and I would keep white plates, which I absolutely just eat through white plates like crazy. So I know, you know, if like we go to a convention and we're going through bins, I know that if it's a white one by four plate, I'll probably use it at some point. <laughs> so it gets thrown into the cup. Yeah. Uh, but there's a bunch of other like wall pieces. I hardly ever use the wall pieces. I never use tires. I mean, I, I, the tires to me are almost like a complete waste. Um, you know, I, I'll keep a couple set of tires around, but I just don't build vehicles for the most part. But everybody's different. So. Uh, I'll say this about tires. Lego tires reproduce. If you put them in a bin <laughs> and you keep them in the closet, it's like the glitter on your Christmas ornament stuff. It reproduces. I'll go in there and there's more. It's like tribbles. Tires come from everywhere. And and then if I actually need tires, I can only find three that match yeah. when I need four. Yeah. And that is when you go to Bricklink yeah. going, all right, dang it. I think we're kind of gently uh, making fun of ourselves here. But, but I also want to say um, that there's ways of doing this responsibly. And I don't just mean... Bye, Brick Smith. Bye. Bye. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. There, there's ways of doing this responsibly. And, and I... I don't just mean financially, but I also mean emotionally. Like, you know, if you're in a relationship and you 
whether it's about how much money you're spending or whether you are the extent to which you're like letting your Legos spread out of the house and the extent to which your significant other is, is allowing you or, you know, indulging you or encouraging you in that. I think the important thing to remember is, uh, to, to be grateful about that and, and to make sure you're, you're meeting them as well. Like you, know, you, are you, if you them to encourage your, your hobby, are you, are you encouraging their hobby just as much? You know, are you being just as, as, as generous yourself because, um, that's important, you know. You can't expect that is, that is important. I want to. I want to point out the reason I have done so little seemingly here is because I've been doing stuff for the missus to encourage her and indulge her and make her feel more comfortable in our new environment. So, I mean, this is important to me and maybe somewhat important to you guys eventually. But uh, it's going to pale in comparison to her comfort level and her happiness. And yeah, I've had Lego in that space where we both lived <laughs> off and on for years. Uh, but now it's 99.99999, really 999% here, right here around me. Yeah. So, and I'm very grateful to have this space. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd like hey to guys, jump uh, me and Small Paul, we're going to duck out. So I just want to say bye. Bye, yeah, man. Hi, friend. Oh, wait, here he comes. He wants to say bye. All right. There's a doggy in the way. Here we are. Good night, Paul. Bye, bye. See you, pal. Good night, bye, Paul. Oh, and now he's gone. No. To, to, to follow up on Magnus's point about relationship, I mean, one of the reasons that my Lego hobby has grown is that my spouse has had two back surgeries and is now disabled after a very serious car accident a year and a half ago. And we just don't go out hardly ever. I mean, we stay in a lot and Lego is, I can build Lego uh, at the table as we watch movies or TV series. And it's something that I do around him most of the time. In fact, there are weeks where I, I spend almost no time in the Lego room because I'm building down in front of the TV because that's, that's shared couple time. And every once in a while I'll be like, you know, I actually need to go up to the Lego room. <laughs> Or, 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 or I'm constantly walking up the stairs because I can't find that one by two tile. And I know where it is in my Lego room, but I need to keep finishing the set I'm working on as we sit and watch a movie or a TV show or something like that. So um, I probably would do less Lego if, if I was, a, if circumstances were otherwise, but you know, it, it in some ways probably helps with, with the relationship. For sure. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's one of those things. Mel knows that I'm naturally introverted, and I need to be, and I people a lot, so I it yeah. wears me down, and that just makes me irritable. Yep. And there are times she'll send me to the leg room. She'll just say, "I think you need to go to the leg room," and that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I mean that, but we understand that kind of thing. Also, if I'm watching, you know, season four of Star Trek: The Next Generation for the forty seventh time, and she's like. <laughs> You know, there's a TV in the Lego room, and I'm like, yay! <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That happens, but, you know, also she understands that this is this is my hobby. Like, we talked about, yeah. I, I thought about that would be a good topic, maybe for another show, is the other hobbies we have. Well, honestly, I mean, I've comic booked and collected Transformers and stuff at different points, but it's it's really budgetary, and everything's boiled down to this is, this is the hobby. This yeah. is kind of it. This is where the massive amount is going. Yeah. And I've actually thought about um, since I've got a nice window in the backyard, get me an art art table, and just doing um, doing some art and yes. doing that. Yes, Pick, please. picking that back up a little bit, and it's yeah. you know that can get costly too. But I just want to do that for fun. I set off Alexa for some reason. She's talking to me. Sorry about that. So um, anyway, um, uh, but yeah, so it, it really has boiled down that most of my fun budget is going to this and the fortunately the kid upstairs well he, he dad can i spend some money on Fortnite? yes um kind of stuff uh but uh in general we try to be open and honest technically you know my wife and i can see the bank accounts we know what's coming where although not all the time do i say what that paypal purchase was for <laughs> <laughs> uh, i bought a shirt uh, yeah um <laughs> A three hundred dollar shirt with shipping <laughs> from Billing. Um, anyway, <laughs> but it's so, true. I mean, but just yeah. And just before we say hi to, to Jeff, <laughs> hi Jeff. Hi Jeff. Um, 
that's yeah, right. and like, and that's for that's why actually my original question it's that's there's the reason for why you do it, and then there's the justification, and that also goes into your to your you know to your spouse, you know, because the justification it's to yourself, but it's also to your spouse or your family or whatever, right? Right. And um, and the way I tend to think about it too is that, and luckily my wife thinks about it the same way. Thank God. Um, that, um, uh, you know, I have uh, friends who easily drop 150 bucks on the weekend to go play a round of golf, right? you know, or they spend five, 600 to take in a hockey game or even more expensive is that they themselves or their kids are in a sport, either house or rep. And if you got a kid in rep, that's like 10 grand, like without like standing on your head. So, and personally for me like those other things not the golf but i mean the gambling you know the drinking the smoking you know and unfortunately a lot of the things about rep sports you know i'm not going to do it here but i don't i find that they're actually not as they're they're potentially toxic too i took a look at all those things i'm like the amount that i spend on this small thing just for me or for whatever is like minuscule compared to all that stuff. It is. So it, it, it honestly is. All right. Let's take a moment and acknowledge we have both Jeffs have joined us. The the Canadian and the non-Canadian. Double so, barrel Jeff. <laughs> we we have we have significantly increased our percentage of Jeff today. So <laughs> that's awesome. Uh Jeff and Wendon, what's up in your world, man? Uh, not much. Spending way too much on Lego this past week. Because <laughs> everything How that's, topical. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everything that's been out of stock for the past, since well, since January 1st, has been uh, become available. And I have a wish list on Shop at Home, and I've been refreshing it every day, like as soon as I get down to my desk. And every day there's something new. So it's like the um, the, the the Chinese Garden, the the Cafe Corner building, the police station came up. Uh, which is now still back, or which is now on back order for sixty days as well. Uh, the flowers, the bouquet, these flowers came up like yesterday or two days ago mm -hmm. with a limit of two. Uh, the bonsai tree, like everything this week. So my credit card is screaming at me. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, it's been kind of a dry streak as well for the past month because none of that stuff was available. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but and I thought these were going to be bigger. These All little right. cubes. For some reason, I thought this case was going to be like a 12 wide or something in my brain. Yeah. And then when I, when I got it today and I opened it, I'm like, that's it? <laughs> so, just like yeah. just about everybody that has that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's $20 yeah. a Lego in your hand. And that's yeah, where we have to go. Here. Okay, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, you can buy those parts for each of those on bricks and pieces. You can buy the, the lid. You can buy the back. There's, uh, a, there's a Someone put up a Lego video about that on YouTube. Yeah. Yes, and did. It's the, oh, did you? Okay, I missed yeah. it. Oh, Sorry. Is my camera going freaky? You're glitching like the 80s, man. It's awesome, actually. That's so. my good camera. Are you, it's a, you should take the stock filter. Just go ahead and admit it. That's what you're... That's Hold on. Doing. Let me see if I can fix it. All right. Let's go to the other Jeff real quick. How you doing, Jeff? Hey. Jeff? I'm good. Um, so I, I mentioned something about building a faction, and uh, I really want to uh, expand on... Uh, the old CMF line, which are these guys way back when. We all remember them. And we oh, all yeah, like, yeah. Oh, these are magical. Yeah. And so I wanted to make like a light trooper version of them to be in you know, the same universe or whatever. So like I've been working on this and like giving them like the jet trooper like mo like variant and stuff like that. So cool. um, I've also been working on uh, a fantasy medieval like a uh, design thing with the blacksmith shop that I want to incorporate. So, uh, you know, with me, minifigures are usually the way to go. So I took some of the old elf uh, CMF sets or CMF figures and started mishing and mashing with some uh, loader stuff and some brick arms, brick orders stuff with the little, you know, dealies cool. there. And, nice. You know, just messing around with parts and pieces and ordering stuff off BrickLink for more silly things that I need for my silly little faction that I'm making. So I got about... I like uh, it. A couple more of those coming. The funny thing is, is that like when I decided to do this, I was like, I want it to be dark blue because the Jurassic Park soldier guys, the Jurassic World guys, those mm -hmm. soldiers, that camo is really cool for some reason. Like it's, mm. it's a 
it's the U.S. Navy camouflage because the U.S. Navy guys need to have camouflage that's the same as the ocean. Yes. And so I was like, man, that'd be really cool. So that's what I'm trying to go for. We'll see what happens. You know, uh, I've got a, a mock idea for it. Like I've been, I've been playing Space Engineers a lot to uh, Dan is Chargon and uh, yes, yeah, and um, I've been building ideas of drop ships in that game, and then I'm like, you know, I could build the set of Lego. So that's what I've been trying to get a good balance of. We'll see what happens, though. Cool, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, uh, super, super awesome. Those, Glad you're here. Got those um, great. Um, was it the Brick Arms did those uh, Alien Pulse? Yeah, light rifles. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. So that's why I liked them because I, you know. They're from aliens, man. Like you have troopers, it's it's really the gun you need. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, talking about that pulse rifle. There's a guy. He's on TikTok. He's called Props to History, and he he's like super knowledgeable in the business about props and movie props. And he did two or three videos about that pulse rifle, the ones that worked and didn't work, the hero and stuff. That was super entertaining. Probably the coolest gun in you know sci-fi, other than well, okay, it's the coolest gun. Um, <laughs> still the weight, right? Uh, well, I mean, the, the proton gun from Ghostbusters is far superior than any gun ever made, so we're just going to leave it there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think the smart gun from Aliens is pretty kick butt too. Yeah, the cool. truck! I think the, I think the Cobra Viper rifle, gray one, is there's something about that I've always thought was really cool. That MP444 already looking thing? I don't know. So maybe so many of you gun nerds can explain this to me, but for me, the uh, the Saburo, and I don't know what number it is, but for me, that was always the weapons that they used in Ghost in the Shell, which was in, you know the manga back in the 80s, and all of these yeah. other things that people were like, oh, this is so cool, it's cool. I'm like, that's a ripoff from Masamuni Shiro. He's the he's the <laughs> godfather of the, the the cool weaponry. Yep. <laughs> wait, wait, did you say did you say the guy's name was Sabaro? Is that the guy that started no, the, that's the name of the weapon? The mall? That's the name of the weapon is the weapon line is the Sabaro, and his name is Masamuni Shiro, who got his start with apple seed and then Ghost in the Shell and uh, goes on from there. Great. Yeah. Great. He's the reason you like cyberpunk, darn it. Oh yeah, he, he is the godfather of cyberpunk. For sure. He also yeah. makes a he also makes a mean big ZD in the mall uh, food court. So um... <laughs> thanks, Dad. I, I didn't think we were going to make it through the next five minutes without a dad. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we we are. The, I can't believe we're 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 uh, crawling on a couple hours here, and this has been a great chat, but. So do you want to tell a story at least at least one time you have snuck one past your spouse or somebody in your family and gotten away with it? Or even better, when you got busted. That would be really cool. All right, Maddie's got one. Okay. So this one time it was Christmas. and one time band camp. No, 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 no. So, uh, you know, I like to make up excuses to go to Target so I can check the sales or go to Walmart and check the Lego sales, right? Be sneaky. And I had already bought the Harry Potter astronomy teller, but um, like a couple days ago, but I was like, mom, I got to go to Target to go Christmas shopping. Like, I'll be right back. Went to Target and um, found the Friends, the Central Perk set. Mm. It was like 40% off. And I was like, I got to scoop that up. So I scooped it up. But then I was like, how am I going to get this? past my mom who's sitting in the living room <laughs> and up to my room and so I walk into the door and I shout really loudly from the side door I'm like mom close your eyes I'm com coming upstairs with you <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to see it and then she's like okay I'm closing my eyes and I like have it behind my back and I like double check to see that her eyes are closed and then I'm like okay scree 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 <laughs> <laughs> But then it's like a big set, so yeah. Um, anyways, it's hidden right now. <laughs> it's crazy. The other thing is that um, her closet is in my room, so she goes through my room. Like she has to walk through my room to get to her closet. So you really know the story is going to be good when you start out about twenty decibels lower than your normal speaking voice. <laughs> I'm sorry, I sleep at home with my parents. <laughs> 
But the thing is, it's after Christmas now, so can't you just take it out and put it down somewhere? Like, would she notice that it's not yeah, never been there? Yeah, I'm basically buying Lego like twice a week now. So <laughs> <laughs> only twice? I was gonna say tw only twice. Yeah, it's your birthday again. <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday. So Actually, I, Maddie's only 22. She says she's 30 because she's had five birthdays a year for the past couple of years. <laughs> Her birthday's on the 29th of February. <laughs> That's there you go. All so right. I, I cut down. I cut uh, Matthew down earlier because he was going to make a comment about, and I thought we were going to go into this differently. But so every so often, you get to be friends with Lego store employees. Oh. And, or in Maddie's case, mm -hmm. well, so <laughs> Matthew, so Matthew used to work at my Lego store that I frequent the most, which is how he and I met. But then he also introduced me to you know the people in the store, and then I became a regular, and you know it just goes, it's 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 a spiral downhill from there. Yada but yada yada. The point is, is that Matthew was an employee at one time, so he was used to the employee discount, and he was friends with one of the team leads, and she couldn't use all of her discounts. So Matthew got to partake in her discount quite often. And then it reached a point in time where, you know, maybe an employee was leaving and, hey, Dana, this employee, this employee is leaving. Did you want to use a little bit of what they have left for their allotment? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And so you get to a point where you got, you get kind of used to every so often getting a 50% discount. Now, granted, you don't get the points, but that's, you know, who cares? Oh. You, get, you, get, you get the discount, who cares? But then when an employee in January decides to leave the company to go do another career for whatever reason, and they have their entire allotment, which I think was probably, close, what is it, Matthew, correct me if I'm wrong, it was like close to $2,500. Right. And A year? Uh, for the year, that, that was her allotment for the year was $2,500 that she could use her discount on. And so she came to Matthew and I and said, I'm going to let you each of you have a thousand dollars of my discount. This was in January, right after <laughs> Christmas, yeah. right after my wife's birthday, which is January 16th. <laughs> and it's like, uh, I need to do my taxes like now. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a, I think that was a January where I was eating like ramen in uh, Kansas soup for the last week of the month. It was, exactly. It got exactly. really tight. And, really and both tight. Matthew and I walked in there at the, basically at the same time. I don't even know if that was one of our unplanned times where we just happened to both show up at the Lego store at the exact same time, which is uncanny that we do it all the time. But we both spent the full thousand dollars that we were given to use because you're getting two thousand dollars worth of Lego. Wow. Um, I walked out with a Millennium Falcon, a Death Star, and three of the modular sets that I didn't have. I want to. I want to see the two of y'all actually in my head. I see you both in the store, and there's one set that you both want, and all of a sudden the you know the Western music and the woo -woo -woo, you know, are facing each other down for the set, and they're <laughs> jingle all the way. Funny, funny you should say that. But employees were only allowed to get two of the large sets per year. So if if like an employee already bought a million Falcon, they can only buy one more. Yeah. Oh, is that all? <laughs> <laughs> but the fun, but the nice thing is, is that Matthew and I both build differently, so we don't really ever, we never really ran into that as a problem. Hmm. Um, so, but yeah, he so, was, so the fun. So the, the, but so here's the thing about the getting caught or or portion of this is that I went to my wife because I'm very upfront with my Lego purchases, and I said to her. Uh, so and so is leaving the Lego store. Who I get, you know, get to use their discount from time to time, and she's allowing me to use a thousand dollars of her discount. And so I was going to go ahead and get another Millennium Falcon and uh, a, something else. And you know, she's like, "Well, how much can you spend?" I said, "I can spend up a thousand And she's like, "Well, how much are you going to spend?" I'm like, "I'm only going to spend like four or five hundred She's like, "Why? Why not spend the whole thousand Again, did I mention earlier that I have an enabler? Yes, you yes you did, and that's that's pretty amazing. Well, um, I will say, I will say, now last, last question to go around we because we're running out of time. Uh, I'm sure, pretty sure we've all gotten stimuluses. We all got the stimulus stuff here in the states, and the one that we just got was a chunk um, for us with three in the house. Um, 
Uh, I'm having to buy a floor for our upstairs. I can't <laughs> use any on Lego, and I am. Ah! And this morning, this morning, I'm sitting on that seat in that little room over there that makes the flushy sound this morning, and the the poo set, which is funny because I was what I was doing. But anyway, the poo set on Lego.com came up, and it was available. Yeah, and I'm staring at it in my cart, and I'm like. I got to, I mean, I was so adult. I'm like, I've got to buy a floor. We got to afford the floor. We're going to, and I didn't do it. Of course, I revisited it later and it sold out and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, it'll, it'll come back. It'll be fine or well, whatever. Yeah, but the, better, the better thing is, is that there was no GWP with the release. So you might as well wait. Well, yeah, right. I already the got, characters. well, I already got the carrot house and the, got the, I got the double GWP Monday. So, um, yeah. April's was, coming around the corner, April 1st. We're, there's going to be a new one. Just wait. Oh, yeah, that's true. This yeah, is actually maybe the boo won't be available. But but th <laughs> this is the really good thing about Le Lego though, and this is what tempers some of my purchases and enables me to hold back because I know that with relative surety that it's going to be available again at some point. It's not like the other junk that I buy where it's gone, it's gone, and the only time you're going to see it is on eBay for like thirty million dollars. So outside of like you know the convention specials or that that stupid bespin piece of tripe or whatever right <laughs> all that stuff that's like you the know, one over there yeah the one that you got short up the table that one he's <laughs> got five copies we weren't you. live oh boy with this <laughs> rich <laughs> um but yeah so like to me that helps a lot because like you know okay back ordered whatever at least you know it's going to show up at some point which helps you hold off i think a little bit a yeah, little yeah. Bit. that i mean except for the i mean there there are rare bits there are rare figures and everything but for the most part the stuff we want to buy is in really ready supply and there's a most of us in this room remember the day when it wasn't in such ready supply yeah um like for folks who've been in the hobby with just years, their collection rivals the size of us who have been in it for 40 years. And I mean, it, the availability is there. I mean, yes, it's expensive, but um, everything. I, I, and also when it boils down to it, if you're in a relationship with someone, you've got to be honest with your finances. Little sneaks here or there, being silly here. You know, the joke of is it easier to ask for permission than forgiveness or forgiveness and permission? Um, don't play that card too much. Let's just say that too, because no. that that can that may cause tons of problems, and uh, probably that's the one of the biggest problems in in relationships and marriages and things is finances. So you know, be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, we all kind of sneak one by on occasion, so uh, it happens. But anyway, thank you guys for being. Anybody else have a last minute comment before we log out, log off? Anything you need to uh, go ahead, Magnus. Uh, yeah, there's a Lego sale on Amazon. <laughs> As of this afternoon. Uh, no, dang there, it, I will. No, I, I actually am going to open it for like 20 bucks. They're like 15. <laughs> we, we didn't really talk to Jeff either, did we? Did we not talk to Jeff? Jeff, did we leave we're you out? Do you, feel, do you feel slighted, Jeff? You, you're muted, Jeff. You're muted. Have a nice <laughs> night, everybody. <laughs> 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 Sorry, John. Uh, Jeff, go ahead and pull up that Amazon uh, uh, tab and see what's on sale. And, you know, anyway, all right. Hey, guys, we do need to go because we were running almost two hours. I appreciate you being here. appreciate you guys watching. Had a great uh, viewership today, a lot of uh, conversation in the uh, the live chat there. So thank you all for doing that. We'll be back on Messy Monday on Monday uh, to talk about nothing. And then we'll be back on the show on Thursday to talk about probably more of nothing but uh we are so glad you joined us this always is like being in a convention and i'm so glad that you guys want to hang out and chat and just uh swap stories like that uh i always appreciate it be nice to a neighbor be kind to someone and wear a mask and get a shot if you can make one happen talk to y'all later bye Good night. bye, bye.